okay. So let me make my second point, if I may. Yeah. Which, which is the Supreme Court of the United States stands, and I'm sure Justice Roberts is keenly aware of this, at a critical historical juncture. People are talking about packing the court. A guy who a lot of people think, even if you concede that the 2016 election was fairly decided, Donald Trump, is illegitimate because they tried to impeach him twice and they won't let him have a Twitter account. Anyway, I was just saying the Supreme Court's at a critical juncture. I, I was saying the guy that a lot of people think is illegitimate, Donald Trump appointed three, count them three, three justices to the United States Supreme Court, including one right within the shadow of his own electoral defeat and one who took the place of someone who should have been confirmed, but who the uh, that guy, that rascal in the Senate, Mitch McConnell, kept from ever getting a vote. So the Supreme Court is in play. People talking about packing the court and whatnot. Supreme Court is in play. Now somebody leaks a draft opinion. Why? In order to influence the midterm elections in 2022? You, you make this into a big, uh, you know, brouhaha issue and you can motivate the Democrats to come out and you can discredit the Republicans to some degree. I mean, shouldn't we all be a little unsettled by the by the growing politicization, or are you going to tell me it's always been so, uh, of, of, the, of the Supreme Court? This is the law. And, and I might even mention, you said, you said it, not me, um, uh, Katanji Brown Jackson and the way that Biden handled that. And we're in an era of fierce conflict over diversity, equity, and inclusion, and the Democrats are running absolutely full bore on it. We have a black woman finally after 258 years, however long it's been. Politicizing the Supreme Court is what I'm talking about. It's always been so. Well, in this case, with the always, you'd have to talk about the whole history of the country and certain isolated episodes. But you're making me think about this. There are times when you've got to do the Liberty Valance thing. <laughs> and this, what's going on with the Republicans right now? And I have to check myself because I remember everybody talking about the country being in this unique existential crisis during the GWB administration. This is the worst it's ever been. Now you look back on that and it seems like an episode of West Wing. But Indeed. I do feel like this is the worst, partly because of the weird thing of social media and its range. And we have this Republican establishment that has this disproportionate power, despite being led partly by people who haven't got a wit of sense at all. And we have this you know, Machiavellian person in the Senate, Mitch McConnell, who clearly is about as close to amoral as any public figure that I've known lately who's intelligent. And this is the way it looks like it's going to be forever. If somebody leaked this document, in concern for that, Glenn, I hate to say that in the grand scheme of things, looking at it with the camera pulled back, how this republic dealt with its problems, maybe that's deep throat. Maybe that's the way it had to be in order to create a larger, all those sloppy kind of justice. I can't say I mind deeply. Now, maybe oh, it was at least for that reason. Oh, no. But you can't oh. go with it. I, I could disagree with you more, John. I don't think it's going to have an effect, but if that's why the person did it, we're in. Well, okay, so when Trump was president, stuff started coming out like <laughs> he'd have a call with a foreign leader somewhere, and the next thing you know, the New York Times would know what they said in the telephone call. Uh, and a lot of, a lot of stuff. And it was okay because it was Trump and, you know, he was a fucking asshole and he had a Muslim ban and he was a racist. He uh, questioned Barack Obama's birth certificate. That's he not, said, I wouldn't cetera. justify it on the basis of that, but go ahead. Well, 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 the, the uh, chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, if I'm not mistaken, during the election crisis of 2020, communicated to the Chinese government that. Uh, notwithstanding turmoil within our ranks, not to worry, any apparent semblance of aggressive action from us uh, would not be, should not be interpreted as a, as a, a threat. Uh, and if there were going to be a problem, I'll let you know. 
That was pretty unprecedented. He went over the head of the commander in chief to communicate with the Chinese government. If I've got my facts straight, this is the story that I heard. I, I, I heard people on cable television and in print call the president of the United States a traitor say that he was being blackmailed by the head of state of a nuclear power who is our rival, at, with whom we are in effect at war now. I mean, uh, I think the... Uh, 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 violation of, of, of norms of restraint in how it is that you... Uh, talk about the president of the United States that were characteristic of the Trump era were unprecedented in my lifetime. I mean, of course, Nixon was Nixon. By the time Nixon went out, you know, he was Nixon. But I never saw anything like it myself. Uh, and I, th I think it was authorized by the fact that the guy was who he was. And a lot of people thought, you know, it's an existential threat to the republic. Fuck him. That, that's what they thought. And, I'm, and all I'm trying to say is he's not president anymore, but that that um, chicken is out of the hen house or yeah. what, whatever it is. Something has been loosed into the world here of a kind of uh, lack of restraint or deference or something like that, that, you know, people just think that it's a good and evil, it's black and white. They're, you know, they're this conservative court is going to overturn Roe, a woman's white right to choose. We fought hard to keep people like Kavanaugh off the court, and Clarence Thomas, for that matter, off the court, precisely because there are too many Catholics on the courts. They're going to overturn Roe versus Wade. And that legitimates doing what might have been thought unthinkable uh, in, in a prior time. I hear you. Sometimes a little vigilante justice, without a doubt. You're right. How far does that go? I know what you mean. Maybe it made a certain sense two, three years ago, but is that going to be the way it is forever? And I know that that's a danger. I think that the slippery slope argument can be overapplied. I sometimes wish that I were in a field where writing an article about that would make some sense, but you know, that's not linguistics. But mm -hmm. I'm not sure I see it. Um, in this case, I think that it's as urgent as Trump's idiocy was. Just this fossilized Republican colossus that is basically determining what happens in this country on so many levels and making meaningful legislation impossible except by executive order that this isn't right it isn't right and i know that this robert caro ideal was really just something that existed during the middle decades of the 20th century that's maybe that's never going to happen again but wow the sclerotic nature of these things leads me to think that certain irregular actions are necessary because business as usual won't work, even if there's a uniquely charismatic leader, as we've seen with Barack Obama and what he quote unquote meant. Biden isn't charismatic, but you know, who, who, would, who would be at this point? Who could get anything done with the Senate in particular the way it is? So I just worry. Let me make a prediction. Your charisma is going to come from the right. You're going, yeah. to, have, you're going to have a um, smart governor. Maybe he's a governor of Florida. I don't know. Or she. Yeah. Or she. Or maybe it's a black person. They, they might it, be. It, you can't rule that out. I mean, over the next 20 years. It could happen. They're, they're going to have a counter-revolution against not only wokeness, but against this kind of soft uh, uh, left uh, uh, compromise with wokeness mm -hmm. that, that constitutes the center of the Democratic Party, that constitutes the, the heartbeat of the of the intellectual left, of the journalistic, uh, uh, mainstream, corporate, uh, et cetera. Uh, and there's a cultural backlash that's brewing. You see it in the schools and whatnot. Uh, the Latinos are, are, are peeling away from the Democratic Party. I, the, the race thing is bankrupt, Black Lives Matter and stuff like that. I mean, there, there's a kind of almost a caricature. I mean, they're, they're like a cartoon that you would if you were trying to make up this thing. Uh, and I just think the wind is blowing in the other direction. And I, and, and I, I think uh, somebody can put it together. Uh, and uh, th that's where I think the, the charisma is going to come from. And the, and the people on the other side are going to go ballistic. They're going to they're say fascism is afoot. Um, it's going to get very ugly. 
uh, and uh, and people are so dug in, and you know. I mean, I was with my friend, one of my friends who was at the conference, who I don't want to name, who's a, a very liberal guy I've known for a long time. I mean, he's still talking about uh, Barack Obama's birth certificate and stuff. I mean, he's still, you know, it's, you know. And uh, I, I, so <laughs> um, people ask me whether I want to be right or be helpful. And I want to know, be helpful to what? You apparently know who you want to be helpful to. You say uh, it's worth uh, throwing a monkey wrench in the works in order to slow the machine down because the machine is off count. And, and, and you think you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>